It is an amazing day for Yu-Gi-Oh! As we get to finish up round two of the YCS Lockdown Tournament with Dinos versus Sky Striker. Sky Striker is going to start off first by activating Pot of Desires. They're gonna banish 10 cards from the top of the deck to cure two more resources. And speaking of resources, this is exactly what the Sky Striker deck needs. It is a deck built on being able to out advantage the opponent through the resources when you have three spell cards in your graveyard, your Sky Striker spells will gain additional effects, something that other decks just can't do. If you can get into that grind game with the Sky Striker concept, which is the goal, then you can possibly win the game just by whittling down your opponent's resources and life points. Foolish Burial Goods is going to be activated, allowing them to send a spell or trap card from their deck to the graveyard. They're gonna choose Metal Foes Fusion to shuffle it right back into the deck to draw an additional resource. Now, some players have moved away from the Foolish Burial Goods concept, mainly because Sky Striker Mobilize Engage is banned. But the reason why this card is still so good is because it can actually be used to search your important Sky Striker spell cards because Kagari is now at three. And also it can fulfill the requirements of your Sky Striker spell second abilities by putting a spell card in the graveyard for free and potentially putting another one if you don't need that Metal Foes Fusion or if you need those three spells in a pinch. So Sky Striker mulling over their options, they're going to normal summon Sky Striker Ace Rose to their side of the field, activating Airspace Area 0 and setting three cards face down, hoping to get a Sky Striker card with the Airspace Area 0 targeting their middle card, a Pot of Desires, a Double or Nothing, and an Upstart Goblin. So unfortunately, the strategy won't be able to get an additional resource, but there's some information that Dino now knows. While Sky Striker is a grind deck, this particular build is going to be playing the Utopia Package combo. So the deck definitely wants to grind, but if you give it an opportunity, it can summon two level four monsters and make Utopia double to attack for game. So Sky Striker Ace Shizuku is going to be summoned ending the turn. They'll be able to add a Sky Striker spell card from the deck to their hand that is not in the graveyard. And fortunately for them, there are no Sky Striker spell cards in the graveyard. So Widow Anchor is gonna be their card of choice. The crazy thing about these two strategies is that the Sky Striker strategy wants to grind it out, but it has a chance of one-shotting, while Dino wants to one-shot, but also can grind it out. We actually asked our Discord on which strategy do you think would win, and surprisingly, it's gonna go 80% for Dinos. But I want you guys to post down below in the comment section which one of these strategies you would think will win, and who do you have for the YCS Lockdown Tournament? as Lost World is going to be countered by a Mystical Space Typhoon. That's gonna prevent Dinos from getting deeper into their combos, but it looks like they have another Lost World, and it's gonna be countered by another Mystical Space Typhoon. Whoa! Looks like Dinos are going to have to think twice about a Lost World combo unless they have a third Lost World in their hand. It's gonna be a pretty sad day for Dinos as they're going to normal summoning your Soul Eating Off Raptor, meaning that they did have quite a bit of combo sequence in their hand. Using Soul Eating Old Raptor to add a baby Sarasaurus is going to let us know that maybe the combo sequence isn't just yet over for this particular strategy. Following up, it looks like Dinos are going to activate Dragonic Diagram, using the effective Diagram to destroy the baby Sarasaurus to add a True King monster from their deck to their hand. Their card of choice is going to be a True King Agnomazit, as Baby Sarasaurus will trigger to spell summon another baby to the side of the field. So it's going to be really interesting to see how Dinos are going to do this, as they're going to destroy Baby Sarasaurus to spell summon another Baby Sarasaurus to the graveyard. If you guys find yourself in that particular situation, do not summon the Baby Sarasaurus that you destroyed. But Baby Sarasaurus' effect will trigger the one that was destroyed in the graveyard to spell summon another copy. And it looks like Lethal Sagam is going to be the next card in the Dino strategy, destroying both Baby Sarasauruses to Special Summon itself, and then resolving the effect of Lethal Sagam since two Earth monsters were destroyed. They're going to be able to banish three cards from Sky Striker's extra deck. It looks like their one shot opportunity is going to be banished, as Utopia Double is going to be the one of the cards of choice. And both Baby Sarasauruses' effect will trigger to be able to Special Summon dinosaur monsters from the deck to the side of the field. Dinosaurs seem to have this game rolling in their favor as they're going to spell summon a Petit Pteranodon and a Miscellaneous Sarasaurus. 
And both of those monsters will be preemptively destroyed for a True King Agnumazit. Agnumazit. And that's going to trigger the Petit Tyranodon's effect to be able to summon another dinosaur monster to the side of the field. The only downside is that this particular dinosaur monster cannot attack. So it's going to be rather interesting to see what this particular dino deck wants to summon. It's going to be a giant Rex. More importantly, I think they did it for the Miscellaneous Service and Graveyard. What Sky Striker is going to respond to. They're going to go ahead and use their face down card in Shark Cannon to be able to spell summon Miscellaneous Service to defense position. Now, not only does this get the Miscellaneous Service out of the graveyard, preventing dinos from being able to make their huge plays, it also protects Sky Striker a little bit. Dinos following up. They're going to use the Giant Rex and the Soul Eating for an Exceed Summon. Getting the both of those monsters on to the field was already easy for the strategy. But making a Daggerus the Timeless is going to be even more important as they'll detach both of those materials to draw two additional cards and discard a card from their hand. So Dino is definitely looking for some huge plays here. Uh, they're wanting to get back into that Miscellaneous Sarasaurus. We know that if they draw into one and discard one, they'll be able to have that card in Graveyard to be able to banish, drawing two cards, and their card of choice to be able to discard is going to be, it's going to be really interesting. It's going to be a Drac Alio. So they won't be able to get that particular card that they want, but they will activate Fossil Dig and with Fossil Dig, they'll be able to get a Miscellaneous Eris from the deck to the hand anyways. So some people may be wondering what exactly is the Lockdown Tournament? Now, the Lockdown Tournament, ladies and gentlemen, is a 16 deck bracket decided by you guys. It was extremely exciting to do as we are bringing this to a close. And don't worry, ladies and gentlemen, for the people that just see this as a bracket, if you want to be spoiled, then towards the end of the video, we will show you how the rounds are devying up. And I want to actually take this time to give a special shout out to my players, my judges, my editors, everyone that has been a part of this process. Moving back into the game, Miscellaneous Source was activated from the hand to pitch itself to the graveyard. It can activate that effect multiple times in a turn, which is kind of ridiculous. Using both the Letho Sagam and the Daggers for a Pentastag, it looks like Dinos might just be going up with some plays as double evolution pill is the next card in line to be activated banishing a daggerus the timeless and another dinosaur monster they can summon huge monsters to their side of the hill like ultimate conductor tyranno and with pentastag under it tyranno can inflict piercing damage to miscellaneous saris so this currently doesn't look like game it looks like a huge amount of damage i believe it'd be no it actually might be game right here but Ultimate Conductor Tyranno not summoned to Pentastag. My apologies. Being moved to the Pentastag. It looks like Dinos can put some serious damage on the board. As now they're going to use the effect of Miscellaneous Saris in Graveyard. Banishing the Macelle, the Jirak, Petit Tyranodon, and possibly a Giant Rex. Figuring out what they want to banish. It is going to be a Baby Sarasaurus. No Giant Rex summoned from them. And it's almost ironic to see them not banish the Giant Rex. Because that's the card that they summon to the side of the field, but it all makes sense when the ultimate Tyranno does hit the field. This game is over in the favor of Dinos, and both decks are locked and loaded, have sighted in, and are ready for game two. As it looks, Sky Striker may want to go first, or they could force Dinosaurs to go first, but who knows? Dinos actually might have been prepared. Sky Striker, knowing its game, they're gonna go ahead and start off with Sky Striker uh, Area Zero. Set two cards face down, and they could potentially use Area Zero on one of their cards. This time around, hoping to get a Sky Striker spell off of the reveal. Area Zero targeting the middle card. They're going to reveal Mystic Mine, a Artifact Lancia, and a Sky Striker Ace Ray. They're going to grab the Sky Striker Ace Ray and then shuffle the other two cards inside of their deck. But more importantly, they're actually going to have to send a card to the graveyard, which is Mystical Space Typhoon. So Sky Strikers do have a monster in hand. We know that. It's going to be a Ray, but if they have an additional Sky Striker card that they can use right now, they can actually go into Kagari to recur that resource and then go into the Shizuku for a free search. But as you guys can see, the normal play would just be to normal summon Ray and now use Ray for the Link Summon into a Sky Striker Ace Shizuku. Upon the end phase, Shizuku does get a free search and some really good targets for the Shizuku 
are going to be Widow Anchor, uh, Shark Cannons, and Amazing Target, and even Afterburners. Those are really good targets for Shizuku to be able to add and follow up with on the next turn. Sky Strikers are very confident with only two cards phase down, a Airspace Area Zero. They're going to go into this grind game or hope to grind Dinos out and potentially force a Game 3. So while we are here, ladies and gentlemen, I just wanted to let you guys know if you want to support the channel, there are various ways with you actually getting product in return. I'll be able to link those down below in the comment section, as well as if you guys want to learn where you can find these deck profiles, they've been available on Patreon for Patreon members for quite some time. The card of choice is going to be a Sky Striker Mecha Widow Anchor this time around. And now the strategy will have that extra source of, you know, disruption on the next following turn as obviously it could not be activated or set to the side of the hill during the end phase, passing it right back to Dinos. They're going to have their hands full, knowing that both decks have sighted. Set Rotation is going to be the card to activate. There are some really good cards to be able to stop Dinos that Sky Striker can be playing right now. So Set Rotation is going to set the Lost World to the side of the field, and it's also going to set a Dragonic Diagram for Dinos. The really cautious thing that this deck has to worry about is there can be only one. Dinos with that in mind is probably going to try to play around that because if they are caught summoning Arc animated Animadorned Archosaur to their side of the field with a there can be only one, it can be really painful. Dragonic Diagram destroying a Petit Tyranodon, it's going to allow them to special summon or add a True King monster from the deck to the hand. And then Petit Tyranodon is going to allow them to special summon a dinosaur monster to the side of the field. Their true king monster of choice being Lethal Sagam, and their monster that is going to be summoned is going to be summoning Avaraptor. Avaraptor will use its effect to be able to add a dinosaur monster from the deck to the hand, and that's going to be that Dino Wrestler Pankatrops. Now, Pankatrops is really good. Uh, in theory, Dinos actually could have destroyed the Petit Tyranodon to summon the Pankatrops uh, to their side of the field instead of going into Soul, and then when the There Can Be Only One is triggered, they can just use Pankatrops to destroy it, but they're going to go extra cautious, banishing a Drac Alio and also a True King Aglamazid to be able to banish a card in the graveyard in Sky Striker Ace Ray. Now, this is actually going to be a critical juncture for the Dino strategy, as now they can attack into Shizuku freely. Granted, Shizuku will reduce the attack of Dino's monsters on the side of the field, but they were able to get rid of the Ray, which is huge. That's going to prevent the, you know, Sky Strikers from basically uh, snowballing here, especially summoning the Ray back to the side of the field, potentially making a Kana, which could prevent the attack of the Soul Eating, and then making a Shizuku or, uh, you know, Sky Striker Kagari, which will allow them to gain even further resources. Sky Striker is going to activate Multi-Roll to get rid of the Lost World, they're now free to be able to activate filled spell cards now that the, the Lost World is offside of the field. They're just going to go ahead and set two cards face down, and that's going to be possibly the end of their turn. No more cards in hand. They're going to go ahead and pass their turn right back to Dinos, and Dinos being extra cautious, they don't necessarily want to play into There Can Be Only One, but they do need to figure out if There Can Be Only One is the card face down. So they're going to go ahead and use Dragonic Diagram to destroy True King Lethal Sagam. That's going to add another Agmazid, Agmazid to the, from the deck to the hand. But it's also going to trigger Lethal Sagam's other ability, allowing them to spell summon a non-Earth Worm monster to their side of the field. Monster of choice is going to be the Agni in Graveyard that was destroyed through Agni in hand. So now with two worms on the side of the field, that there can be only one is going to be revealed. Dino's smartly playing around that card. Sometimes you always have to play around cards that may not exist inside of a strategy, but sometimes they exist and you get rewarded for it. So this time around, it looks like they're just going to want to go ahead and attack for some huge amounts of damage. Sky Strikers may have something to say about that. Uh, inside of the battle phase, they're going to use Shark Cannon to be able to banish a monster in the graveyard. Their card of choice is going to be Petit Tyranodon. And then since there are three spell cards in the graveyard, they can use the Sky Striker Mecha Widow Anchor to take control of the Agni from the opponent's side of the field, from Dino's side of the field, preventing them from attacking with any monsters. 
So this is going to be really good for Sky Strikers as now uh, people, some people may not know, but multi-roll gains counters when Sky Strikers are Sky Striker spell cards are activated and can set Sky Striker spell cards on either player's in phase. It also puts dinos in a huge spot because there can be only one does prevent them from summoning any other dinosaur monsters and they've pretty much used the effect of the worm monster that they would have liked to summon. So it looks like they have no other options. It's going to be right back to Sky Strikers. But Sky Strikers are going to be able to set two Sky Striker spell cards to their side of the field because two were used. Their cards of choice is going to be the Widow Anchor and the Shark Cannon. Passing it right back to Sky Strikers. Dinos are still in a bind. Even though they're up in the life point category and even the monster's advantage, they're restricted from advancing their resources. There could be only one is really putting in work against the Dino strategy. Sky Striker thinking about their next move. What will be the card that they will play next? We know if they did open a spell, they actually kind of put themselves in a not so great position. And that is because they have, you know, five spell, spell cards and trap cards on the side of the field. They won't be able to activate another. So they're going to go ahead and use the shark cannon to free up some space, banishing a card from the graveyard. They're going to banish the Drac Alil. And you can assume this is for preventing a uh, double evolution pill. If there's no dinos in the graveyard. It's going to be a lot harder while there are two worm monsters. They're now going to use their pot of desires to banish 10 cards from the top of their deck. And now Sky Strikers does have three spell cards in the graveyard. Their other effects are going to be completely live. On top of that, they're going to get two more resources. They're going to get right back into this game. Now, as you know, this is exactly where Sky Striker wants to be in the thick of the grind, especially when their Sky Striker spell cards can gain multiple effects. It looks like they don't have anything as they're just going to set a card face down and pass in their turn. Talk about hyping the living daylights out of a strategy, but them not being able to back up the hype. So it's going to be Dino's turn. And Dino has an opportunity to slam for some pretty big damage that can put a pretty huge hit to Sky Striker's life points. Agnabazid is going to attack for 2,900. That's probably going to be met with a Sky Striker Mecha Widow Anchor, the one that was set through the multi-roll. And that's going to be the end for Dinos. So multi roll could have actually taken control, or not multi roll, a mecha, mecha Widow Anchor could have taken control of a dinosaur monster, but under these current situations, that wouldn't have done much as Sky Strikers can't pair it up with a monster of their own. They just set a card phase down and passed their turn. Just a Tynos is going to wear out these life points by attacking with their soul eating and their Agramazid. Uh, there can be only one, can only do so much, preventing the opponent from summoning additional monsters, making this game a blowout right now, but. Uh, not preventing those attacks as Dino is going to pass back to Sky Striker. They're going to desperately look for some combos. Not a lot of light points left. So this will be their last turn if they can't provide anything. Fortunately, they are going to have the Sky Striker Ace Ray. Dinos has no responses, no monster that can uh, potentially disrupt Ray. And now it looks like Sky Striker is definitely making a decision. What is going to be on the decision tree? They're going to use the effect of their multi-roll to send their only, there could be only one. This means that they potentially have a way to break this current board. Using the ray for an immediate link summon. A monster in mind that I can think of would probably have to be Hayate. It is going to be the monster that is going to be summoned. Hayate can attack directly for 1500 damage, but also put a Sky Striker spell card into the graveyard similar to how Foolish Burial Goods does. So Sky Striker's card of choice, the only thing that I can genuinely think of is Afterburners. Afterburners will be able to destroy not only a monster on the field, it'll also be able to destroy that field spell, which that could be good because uh, Dinos could potentially keep using that field spell, but more importantly, it helps you clear boards. So Hayate used for a Link Summon, it's going to make Sky Striker ace Kagari. Kagari is going to get back that Afterburners. Afterburners is going to be used. That's going to go ahead and destroy two cards on the field because there are multiple spell cards in the graveyard. 
The targets for Sky Striker is going to be pretty simple. It's going to be the Agni, and it's also going to be the Dragonic Diagram. Now, Agni is going to actually use its effect. <laughs> Some people forget about Agni's effect, but Dino didn't necessarily. They're going to get Lethal Sackum back from their graveyard to their hand. But Sky Striker, I am 100% sure, has ways to be able to get over this current situation. They're not necessarily phased by Lethal Sackum getting back into the hand. Sky Striker, if you're thinking about their next move, this might just be the end of their turn. Uh, after making the Kagari into a Shizuku, that's going to allow them to grind a little bit longer. But uh, ultimately, that's just going to be it. Unfortunately, the banning of Sky Striker Mobilize Engage does hurt Sky Strikers tremendously. But them making to the second round is a testament on how powerful the deck can still be. Using the effect of Shizuku, they're going to be able to add from their decks to the hand a card not in the graveyard. We already know both Widow Anchors were used, if I remember correctly. Afterburners is in the graveyard. No, not both Widow Anchors. My apologies. One of them is banished, so they'll be able to get the second one. And the cool thing about this is that they'll be able to do that Shizuku Shuffle that is pretty rare to do. They can activate that uh, Sky Striker Mecha Widow Anchor to negate a monster on the side of the field. And then since it's still the end phase, they can use the effect of their multi-roll to be able to set that Widow Anchor back to the side of the field. So we know that Sky Strikers has at least one disruption on their side of the field with that Mecha Widow Anchor that can make Dinos want to think twice about going with some True King plays. We also don't potentially know a, a few of their back row cards, so it could be some cards that could be devastating for the strategy. As Dino is going to attack with their soul leading, they're going to take some damage. They're going to lose their monster, bring themselves down to 6,400 life points. That's pretty odd until you realize that they have a light moon storm that is critical for the strategy. They'll be able to destroy all spells and trap cards. Sky Striker is going to respond by using Eagle Booster on Shizuku, but they're going to lose all of their back row. One of them just so happened to be another. There can be only one, so they were pretty confident, but another one just so happens to be an artifact Lancia. Very interesting that they would even set Lancia to the side of the field. Maybe expecting Twin Twisters in the sideboard. Lancia is going to find itself. The Widow Anchor is going to be correctly banished. And Lancia does provide a, another obstacle for uh, Dinos. And the, the big obstacle is going to be Lancia can tribute itself even on the field to prevent dinos from banishing as you guys know cards like miscellaneous saris um and also the effects of double evolution pill need to banish cards in order to resolve so getting that artifact lancia to their side of the field is pretty good for them dinos are going to follow up with the effects of terraforming they're going to search a lost world from their decks to their hand and you can assume that since they search the terraforming they're going to go ahead and activate said card Terraforming, or not Terraforming, Lost World is going to be activated, following up by a Dino Wrestler and Pankatrops. Since the opponent does control more monsters than they do, then of course Pankatrops can be summoned for free. Also a free token, Pankatrops using its effect to destroy the token, but Lost World is going to protect it, allowing them to destroy a baby Sarasaurus. Sarasaurus is going to activate its effect to spell summon Soul Eating, and this deck has not committed as normal summon as Soul Eating will add another baby from the deck to the hand. And that monster is going to be normal summoning baby Sarasaurus. So leading to destroy baby to spell summon another baby to the side of the build, it will trigger the effect of baby Sarasaurus' effect to be able to spell summon another dinosaur monster from the deck to the side of the field. Try saying that five times fast, ladies and gentlemen. Baby Sarasaurus, baby Sarasaurus, baby Sarasaurus. As both baby Sarasaurus are now going to be destroyed with Lethal Sagam in hand. Lethal Sagam is going to summon itself, destroying both baby Sarasaurus. And now it looks like Nito Sagam is allowing to, or is going to destroy, banish some important Sky Striker cards. This is going to be really powerful for Dinos as now they are playing a grind game. But since they've destroyed so many Baby Sarasaurus, they're going to be able to gain a ton of advantage. The card of truce is going to be a Shizuku, a Zeke, and a Utopia double. So no one-shotting for Sky Strikers. They're also going to be able to trigger the effect of, you guys should already guess it, I've already said its name too many times, to spell summon two additional dinosaur monsters level 4 or lower to their side of the field. 
So with their with this particular situation, Sky Strikers is going to be in a not so great spot. They can get Miscellaneous Sarasaurus uh, to their side of the field, which can eventually go to the graveyard. The only drawback is that Artifact Lancia is in on the field. It can tribute itself to be able to stop the uh, effects or to be able to prevent Miscellaneous Sarasaurus from banishing itself to extend this combo. So dinosaurs definitely have to play cautiously. Another thing that you have to keep mind of is that dinosaurs have already entered their battle phase. So all of this is just to prepare for their next turn. Lethosagum and Miscellaneous Sarasaurus both being used for Link. And that's pretty awkward since Lethosagum is a worm monster. Double Evolution Pill could be in the hand already. They're going to go ahead and use both of those monsters for a Link Summit of Reproductus. Sky Striker not having any of that. They're not going to allow the Double Evolution Pill or the Miscellaneous Sarasaurus. They're going to go ahead and use Artifact Lancey's effect to tribute itself. That's going to prevent Dinos from banishing any cards on the field or graveyard or whatsoever. But it looks like Dino's plan seems to be completely halted. They're going to have to make do with the monsters that they have currently on the field. Using both the Giant Rex and the Soul Eating, they are going to go ahead and exceed Summon for an Evil Sword Logia to their side of the field. This actually spices up the playing field, as now they have an ability to negate a spell trap or a monster summon. They can prevent some of Sky Striker's best cards. Also, you have to keep in mind that seeing that Dino did go through Sky Striker's extra deck, they didn't deem a single threat that wasn't banished currently. It was where Lagia is probably sitting relatively safe. Sky Striker's game plan would be to get into the afterburners, but unfortunately, they control a token on their side of the field. Not only is it in the main monster zone, but Lost World will prevent monsters from being targeted while that token is on the field. And Zeke is already banished. Sky Strikers are going to take their turn. They're going to think about how they can they get out of this situation. The one thing I could see happening is that if you bait the Lagia with the Kagari then you could possibly follow up with, I'm not even 100% sure that Utopia Double is banished, so you can't necessarily tap over to Reproductus for game. But yeah, it's gonna be, it's it's definitely a situation that Sky Striker is in. Currently, they're looking through all of the resources. They're gonna go through their graveyard, see if it's enough to attack over the Evil Sword and this is just a mistake that dinos make unfortunately they do not have enough spells to reduce the attack of logia they would need a whopping number of spells by the way they're gonna use that shizuku for a link into sky striker ace kagari dinos now making sure is this an oversight can kagari actually attack over the logia and fortunately for them it is not not enough spell cards to make the kagari stronger to attack over the logia keep in mind both monsters do lose 500 attack from lost world and while Kagari does get a point bonus, it's still the exact same numbers that they would need. Regardless, Dinos are going to use the effect of Evil Sword Logia. They're going to negate the summon of Sky Striker Ace Kagari. And the real disappointing thing about this is due to how it's ruled, Kagari, even though its summon was negated, another copy of Kagari cannot be summoned that turn, which is really unfortunate for Sky Strikers. I can't really see what Sky Striker spell card they would get. If, and maybe Area Zero, if there is one in Graveyard, that would be... Actually, there is. That would get over the token and potentially get them into a card that they need. So that could be amazing for them. But unfortunately, that Kagari summon was negated. So now Sky Strikers are back to the drawing board, trying to figure out what they can do to get over this Dino board. Possibly even stall out for some more turns to potentially draw into what they need. Sky Striker does, definitely does not want to be sent home packing, but Dinos have made a strong case for them going to the next round. They haven't been in the situation where they're necessarily losing throughout the entirety of this tournament, and so far they have not dropped a single game to any of their opponent decks. Now we are looking to include decks like Etlich and Adamantipator and the YCS Lockdown Series version too, so Dinos would definitely have a lot more tougher competition, but at the time of making these videos or making this tournament, 
and Blitz and Mass Phaser did not exist, so that's why they're not in here. But the normal summon of Sky Striker Ace Rose is going to be followed up by potentially using it for a Link Summon. We know Kagari can't be the target. So the monster that is going to be summoned could potentially... Kana isn't necessarily going to help you right now. So maybe a uh, Sky Striker Ace Hayate? We know Shizuku was unfortunately banished through the effects of Lethal Sagam. So Hayate might be the only card that they can actually genuinely go into. Hayate is going to be the monster summoned on Sky Striker's side of the field. They're going to go ahead and attack for 1500 damage bringing dinos down to 4900 life points and they're going to be able to send a spell card from their deck to the graveyard now the interesting thing is that they didn't attack over to reproductus uh that would have actually still been able to get them a spell into the graveyard but more importantly it also would have allowed them uh to follow up with uh dinos having less cards and I, you know, actually, there's no follow-up. It's just is what it is. It's just getting over the Reproductus. They're going to send Hornet Drones to the graveyard. And now it looks like Sky Striker is definitely trying to formulate a combo. To be honest with you guys, Sky Strikers are just taking a long-ass time. I've done my best to reduce the times that they have taken, but it is what it is. So now Hayate and the token used for a Link Summon. This is going to be really interesting as Dinos does know every single card inside of Sky Striker's extra deck. Not fearing any card, they're going to make the Nightmare Phoenix. Phoenix could destroy the Lost World, but it's not going to activate its effect. They're going to follow up with a Mystic Mind, which explains why they didn't attack into the Reproductus. That will leave both monsters with one, making Mystic Mind being destroyed at the end phase. Passing it back to Dinos, it looks like they're going to buy themselves some time Dinos are going to have to figure out how to out this Mystic Mind, a card that they love to play inside of their deck. So Dinos definitely thinking about their next course of action. They're going to link off the Reproductus and the Evil Sword Logia. That's going to allow them to use the monster that they summoned, but if an additional monster is summoned, Mystic Mind is going to affect the player from using their effects. And Underclock Taker is going to be the card of choice. The next thing Dinos are going to do is give Sky Striker a bigger monster. They're going to tribute off Nightmare Phoenix for the Dagoran. But also it, oh wow, whoa, it looks like they're going to use the effect of Miscellaneous Sarasaurus Big Brain from Dinosaurs. Banishing four dinosaur monsters from their graveyard to be able to spell summon a dinosaur monster to their side of the field. The Dagoran was definitely overkill, but their monster of choice is going to be that ultimate Tyranno, triggering the effect of Lost World to give the opponent to a token to the side of the field, which essentially makes both sides of the field even, meaning that Dino can attack and they can activate their effects under Clock Taker, giving the ultimate Tyranno enough damage to attack for game. It has been an amazing YCS lockdown tournament. Dinosaur advancing to the semifinals nonetheless. It's going to be exciting to see what other strategies are going to advance as well. As always, we want you to post down below in the comment section your bracket. But if you want to see more YCS Lockdown Tournament videos, you can always click right there. As always, I hope you guys are having an amazing day and staying safe in this time of need like I am.